Buckle up guys, this car is packing one heck of a mess inside and out. I honestly don't have words for what we're looking at right now. This is one of the dirtiest cars I've done for quite a while, so there's no question I'll be put to the test today. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's episode, I'll be working on this 2013 Dodge Dart that is absolutely disgusting on the inside. And as you can see, the exterior needs a fair bit of work too. So stay tuned for an epic transformation. All right guys, well getting to work with the pressure washer now to get all this mud off the car. And if you're wondering how the heck does a small car like this get so muddy, well, I had the same thought, so when the owner dropped it off, I asked what happened, and the answer is actually pretty funny. So when he was using Google Maps to find his way to me to drop the car off, it took him down a back road instead of the usual paved road, because it was technically a shorter distance. Now, I've actually had a few other people tell me the same thing happened to them, except that in this case, it had rained overnight, so the dirt road was basically just mud. I told him I wasn't too concerned about it since I happened to like pressure washing muddy vehicles, but I do think we can all relate to Google Maps taking us on a less than ideal route. Moving to the underside, and I'm not at all surprised to see the mud just pouring off the bottom here. Seems the car went through a few big mud puddles on the way, and the whole underside is completely covered. So having a tool like this undercarriage sprayer is vital to doing a proper job today. If anyone out there is in the market for one, I've got the link to it down in the description for you.
Starting on this trunk liner here, which is pretty dirty, and you'll notice I'm not vacuuming it first, and that's simply because once the drill brush and pressure washer have had their turn, there really won't be any more debris on it. But if there ever is anything that lingers after that, I always do a final vacuum on every vehicle as the very last step of the detail, and I'll just get it then. Okay guys, well it's time to tackle this disgusting interior and that starts with removing all the seats so they can be cleaned easier outside the car, including the back seat that just brings so many questions to mind of how the heck does that happen and what are those stains? But anyways, there's no question this interior needs some serious work to look new again, so I'll get all the garbage removed, including the emergency roll of TP, and then get to work with the vacuum. Working my way around with the vacuum and because this dart has that incredibly cheap velcro like carpet that dirt is basically glued to, it's making it very hard to vacuum and having worked on dozens of vehicles with carpet like this, I know perfection is likely not attainable today, but I will do everything I can to get it looking as perfect as possible. Moving up to the driver's foot well which was probably the worst area in here and I see comments all the time saying I should be using a tornado to blast debris out of the carpets using compressed air instead of just vacuuming. Well I do have a tornado and have for quite a while but I've never found it to do a better job than I can do with the vacuum alone. I think the reason for that is my vacuum is very powerful, quite a bit more so than a shop vac so I think those comments likely come from people using less powerful vacuums and thus they would need the tornado. So I do think they have their place, but it's just not something that makes any sense for me to use.
Here's the massive pile of rocks, debris, straw, and who knows what else the vacuum sucked out of the car today, with most of it coming from underneath the trunk liner. All right, well, armed with my incredibly powerful carpet cleaner, I'll get to work on this back seat and all these nasty stains. And when you see how well the combo of my carpet cleaner and green drill brush works, you'll understand why Mike calls it my wizard potion. Seriously though, my carpet cleaner is the best product out there for any sort of dirt or stains in your vehicle's upholstery. And now is the perfect time to pick up a bottle. The entire site over at detailgeekautocare.com is on sale for Father's Day. So if you need to grab a gift to show your dad how much you love him, then be sure to check out the sale. Moving inside, and I know I've been asked this question hundreds of times about whether I clean the whole seat or just the bottom portion. Well, of course the answer is I clean the entire thing in the exact same manner as I do the rest of the seat or the carpet. The only difference is that for the upper portion of the seat, when I do the last few passes, I really make sure to focus on the lowest part as the water tends to pool there due to gravity. Here's the bucket full of all the dirt and stains pulled from the dart today. Gross. Okay, it's time to use my all-purpose cleaner on the interior plastics, which also comes with a handy dilution mixing bottle since the APC is a concentrate and using a 4 to 1 dilution I'll get to work on doing the mess on all the trim in here. And for anyone who has ever wondered about using a steamer near speaker grills or switches around a vehicle, well it's perfectly safe to do so provided you work quickly and don't saturate things with water, especially with the speaker grills. Now I always spray at a steep angle which minimizes the amount of steam that ends up behind it and I've never had a single issue in any of the hundreds of vehicles that I've done.
starting on a couple of storage bin inserts now and it never ceases to amaze me at how gross some people's vehicles get. Thankfully, I've got a very refined process and haven't come across a vehicle yet that I couldn't get looking near perfect. Okay, second last step, and something that should always be done after the paint has been protected, and that's to clean the glass inside and out. And for anyone who struggles to do this without leaving streaks, well, the secret to streak-free glass is to use a waffle weave towel, which you can of course find on my website along with the glass cleaner at detailgeekautocare.com. All right guys, well 10 hours is what it took to undo the colossal disaster. The mud is gone, the stains are gone, and this car is looking absolutely phenomenal. Now as always guys, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check me out on all my other social media, and I'll see you guys in the next one.